Good evening, everybody. Um, a little bit more than 20 years ago, um, Randall Kennedy dropped the manuscript on my desk, simply entitled Nigger. Um, it provoked um, great consternation among my colleagues, but also a commitment to publish it with Brio. The book was published to great controversy and sales. It was a New York Times bestseller and um, inspired a great amount of um, commentary um, about race and about social justice. Around a couple of months into the pandemic, as if that weren't bad enough, Randy called me up and um, proposed that we revisit nigger, if only because the country had changed so much in so many ways and had remained the same also in so many ways. So here is the 20th anniversary of nigger, the occasion for this panel. And so Randy, nigger, then and now. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I will I, I will attend to the question you've put to me. Before I do, I just want to I want to thank the Center for Fiction, and I also want to um, thank uh, Errol McDonald. Um, I would not be writing books were it not for Errol. In the in the in the law school world, uh, a lot of folks mainly just write law review articles, and that's certainly what I was doing. And it was it was it was Errol who suggested that I write a book. And I've, all the books I've, I've written have been with Errol and his colleagues. I think of Alti Carper, I think of Michiko Clark, and book writing has become a real delight in my life. So I'm very thankful for that. Now, on this question of, you know, why this book, you know, every couple of months, I uh, go to a, um, I, I look up cases, legal cases, in which this word figures. And these cases, they're, they're typically, um, they're arson cases, they're cases murder, kidnapping, rape, they're horrific. And this word, nigger is in the backdrop of thousands of cases per year. So this, this word remains part of the, the soundtrack of American racism. Uh, and that's one of the things that prompted me to write the book 20 years ago and Unfortunately, that reality is still with us. A second thing that is with us is um, the way in which um, people respond to the word. I mean, it's, it, it's such a, it has such a horrific history that naturally there, there are folks who want to um, erase racism altogether and they, they they think that they can advance that mission by erasing this word in all of its manifestations and one of the upshots of that is that i'd say every month there is some sort of episode such as the following uh, a teacher is uh, giving a lecture about the founding of the United States. The teacher reads from a speech or reads from a pamphlet where the infamous N-word is being used and students are um, appalled by this and angered by this and demand that the teacher be disciplined. And unfortunately, every month, there are things like that that happen. Uh, somebody is reading Huckleberry Finn. Somebody is reading from 
uh, one of Toni Morrison's novels. Reading and kept my attention over the over the course of uh, of, of twenty years, and uh, Errol, that's why I wanted to write a, uh, a a new introduction, and that's why I I urge you to uh, put forth uh, a new edition of uh, my little book. So, Randy. Uh... First, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me to be a part of this this evening. Uh, it's a fascinating topic. And as you were talking, I, well, a couple of questions came to mind. Why do you think it's still here? Why do you think the word is still viable? Because it's not just about reading you know, things that are read in books. It's a part of people's everyday language. What is there about it? Um, this word has really taken on a life of its own and distinguishes itself among slurs, distinguishes itself among put downs. You know, um, uh, H.L. Mencken in his, uh, has, uh, in his book on the American language has a big chapter on slurs in America. I mean, they're, 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 they're many, and you could write, go, go on, or, but this one, the infamous N-word, is altogether different. So uh, one of the things I do is I, I uh, keep tabs on, well, what about other terms? Mm -hmm. You know, so for instance, the term kike, mm -hmm. the term kike, how many times does that word appear in the backdrop? of uh, legal cases. Mm -hmm. At one time, it appeared, you know, it was, you know, actually quite popular. Mm -hmm. People knew what it meant and, you know, and, and, and it showed up. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, no. Mm -hmm. And the same, the same goes for a whole slew of other terms, you know, mm -hmm. chink, wop, one could just go down the list. This is the term that above all others um, has, has, has kept its potency. And I think it has to do, frankly, at least in part, with the, the, the peculiarity of anti-Black racism in America. I mean, you know, there's various sorts of racisms, there's various sorts of prejudices, but I think that this word that seems to feed off of and in turn nurture anti-black racism, mm -hmm. it it like I say has has distinguished itself. Have and, have we kept have we kept it alive? When you say black we people, black people, I'm sorry. Have black people part, kept it alive? In part, sure. Because I, because you, you think of these other terms, I mean I know that other ethnic groups sometimes refer to one another by these terms in, in a, I don't wanna say an affectionate way, but in a way that's familiar. But I don't know that they do it as much as black people do mm -hmm. it. It's not a part of songs that they sing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, this is an interesting word because it has tremendously negative connotations when used by one group, but used as an in-group word, uh, it is seen as, you know, sometimes could be negative, but also could be a term of affections. So it has a life. There are other, it just strikes me that there are other things besides the animosity that, that keep this, that keep this alive, that have kept it alive. Absolutely. And in fact, I mean, one of the things that makes this word so interesting, I mean, so far I've emphasized the negative, the racist uses of the word. But of course, uh, it's a term that is put to all sorts of uses. I mean, in comedy, for instance, I mean, you know, go to uh, black stand up comedians go to town. Mm -hmm. Pat Williams goes to town mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the infamous N word. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And uh, Richard Pryor, he had a, he had the title of an album that was you know that was crazy. Yeah. That, that was his best album. Mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle in our time. I mean, so you, um, this has been put to all sorts of uses, comedic uses, satirical. I mean, um, uh, Dick Gregory's memoir, Nigger. Oh yeah, yeah. And so you you know it it it's been put to lots of different uses, and I think that. You know, have we black people kept it alive in part, in part, and I don't, and here's where, you know, here's where I have lots of friends who really come down on me because I actually, I'm okay with the way in which black people have put, uh, use this word in all sorts of different ways, sometimes mm-hmm. using it as a sort of a boomerang, throwing it back in the teeth mm-hmm. of racist, but sometimes taking it as a term of endearment, doing all, playing with the word, mm-hmm. playing with it. And I use the mm-hmm. play advisedly, actually mm-hmm. playing with the word. In my view, um, I'm okay with that. I think that that, um, I, th- I think that that shows creativity. I think that it shows uh, a, a, a will to triumph over the, 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 the racist use of this word. So I, I don't have a problem with it. If that is the case, um, shouldn't um, white people also be allowed to play with the word to express their creativity? In my view, yes. I don't have, again, and, and when I say that, now I really, I am sure, you know, here, I, I mean, people really get mad with me. Mm-hmm. No, I, 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 I shouldn't have led you down that rabbit hole. But, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't, I'm, I'm against, I'm against any status barriers in the realm of culture. So I don't think that, you know, I don't, I don't want it to be the case that there's certain terms that certain people, because of their status, because of their ascribed status, cannot use. So, um, you know, uh, if I would say that anybody has a burden when they use this term because of its, because presumptively it's a bad word, mm-hmm. if you use it, you know, you you really have a responsibility on you, and uh, you 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 bear a real burden. But in bearing that burden, I say, you know, let anybody be, uh, bear the burden, including white people. Yeah. Well, I'm sort of with you, and half with you, and half not with you. Mm-hmm. I could do without the word. I mean, when I grew up, I don't think I've ever heard my mother used that phrase. My father used it in describing people, describing the situation and was always negative, but it was never sort of a word that we threw around. So, I mean, I literally never heard my, you know, my mother ever say that word. So I could do without it. I think, you know, I don't think we would lose anything by, uh, if it were to disappear, but (laughs) if we're going to use it, I can't see saying only one group of people can use a word. Mm-hmm. You either, if if you think it's wrong and it shouldn't be used, personally, I think we could make the sacrifice to do away with it and that nobody uses it, that it's ar- archaic, because words come in and out of the language all the time. Interestingly enough, what about buckra? Buckra was a negative term for white people. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, not that I think we should, but we've never been able to make that stick (laughs) you know the the terms for whites don't have the resonance we don't have the power what we're left with is using having the power to take nigger and turning it into something about us something powerful in that way so you know i i could do without it but if we're going to use it i i can't see this is America, I can't see saying, oh, you get to use a word. I get to use a word and you can't use it. I mean, that's the risk that you run when you when you do that. Mm-hmm. So that's, I'm with you. I, I don't, you know, I understand the appeal of the word, 
than when Richard Pryor used it and other people. There's a, it's funny, but it can be funny. But to my mind, the burden outweighs the benefit, you know, and I would be happy to see it go. But it, until it goes, I don't see a, a principled reason for saying that there are other words that only some people can use. So two things. One, just on an autobiographical note, my, my, my socialization was very different than yours. Mm -hmm. In my household, nigger was used very frequently mm -hmm. uh, by, mo by both my mother and my father, particularly my father, Mm -hmm. who used it in all sorts of ways. I mean, you'd have mm -hmm. to, you know, the intonation of voice <laughs> is very important. Yeah. But I mean, he would, you know, um, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so mm -hmm. is the smartest nigga that I've ever seen. And that was, mm -hmm. you know, and he would, that was high praise or so-and-so mm -hmm. so -and -so is the dumbest nigger I've ever seen. <laughs> but, he, but he was constantly by the way, I should also say that uh, other terms, you were talking about you know, terms for white people, in my household, cracker mm -hmm. was a very frequently used term. Mm -hmm. And again, intonation of voice, it was used in all sorts of different ways. So my upbringing was a bit different. On the question of doing without it, for me, you know, so... I wonder what, you know, what would doing without it entail? There, there is a, there is an addition of Huckleberry Finn that is bowdlerized. Mm -hmm. uh, the couple of hundred times where nigger appears, there's a, I, I forget what word that they use, but they put in a different word. <laughs> so, you know, what would it mean to do without it? Would it mean would it mean getting rid of, you know, Richard Pryor's albums? Would it mean getting rid of Cat Williams' albums? Would it mean, you know, wh what about all the times that Baldwin and others have used it? Would it, would mm -hmm. it mean bolderization? What would it mean to do without it? I would mean not, not that. It wouldn't mean that, but mean that it, we would do without it in terms of using it on, uh, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. that, it would be, that it would eventually become a word. There are plenty of words that we read. We read Shakespeare, we read all kinds of words that we don't use anymore. We know what they mean, but they're words from the past. And it's clear that that's, you know, it's archaic. We don't use that anymore. Uh, but no, I wouldn't, I don't believe that Huckleberry Finn should be changed. They should come up with a different word for it or any other thing. But I meant just the, the kind of uses that you're talking about. I'm saying, I, I don't know that it's not a, a campaign to stamp it out or anything like that, but I'm saying we, if it went away, I don't think that for me, not a lot would be lost, mm -hmm. but I would not change what was written in the past. Mm -hmm. okay. But there is a campaign to stamp it out concurrent with um, the ever present status of nigger is, um, is a movement of um, denialism that she, that chooses to um, elide and erase the work. I mean, um, I find it very funny when I use the word nigger and I'm looked uh, and white colleagues look at me askance mm -hmm. in disapprobation, um, as if nigger is proscribed and. My concern is that nigger's not going anywhere. Nigger is embedded in the language of race relations in America. I was reading a book about Shakespeare in America and came across, you know, John Quincy Adams, a progressive anti-slavery, um, you know, former president, bemoaning the bemoaning Desdemona and Othello for having married, as he put it, a nigger, okay? So the word nigger is part of the fabric of American culture, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. The, the, the fact is that we have to figure out how to respond to it, and I don't think that denying it is the way to go. I'm concerned, yeah. for instance, when I see something like um, that documentary, um, I am not your Negro, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Because Baldwin didn't say that. Baldwin mm -hmm. said, I'm not your nigger. 
Mm -hmm. And since we're talking about Baldwin, the issue for me is not so much the word. The issue is why does that word exist? Mm -hmm. And until we tackle that, we'll get nowhere by, act by accepting the word or denying the word. Mm -hmm. Why does nigger exist? Why is nigger a necessity for white America? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, as again, I don't think that they should, they should have picked another title. They could have picked another title for the documentary. It didn't have to be that. Um, but I, you know, I won't confidently predict that we will always be saying it because we don't know. I mean, you know, that's, I can, as a historian, I can tell you what happened in the past. I don't, I don't know that a different, different generations of people may not have, may have a different answer about these kinds of things. But certainly as long as there is a racial problem and as long as whites use it, I have a feel it, it will continue. Yeah. But I mean, among the usage among blacks, you know, I, I expect that that will go on too for the foreseeable future, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's, I don't like the idea of saying that we can never change anything. What is interesting to me is that the most popular music in the world today, you know, which is rap, hip hop, um, is a wash in nigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas the people who are proscribing nigger most might very well be young white millennials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. oh. Has there been a different, I mean, do you notice among young people, Randy, that there's a difference in the response to this from when the book first came out or what do you think is going on now? Is it different culturally? No, I, um, when the book came out, uh, there were very clear lines of criticism and they have continued. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, 20 years ago, there were, you know, people who took what I called an eradicationist position, which was, you know, let's mm -hmm. just get rid of this word totally. Mm -hmm. um, a, 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 a larger group was a group, you know, uh, you know that took the position um, it's okay for, for black people to play around with this word, but white people, it's verboten. Do not, you know, don't dare mm -hmm. even think of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, those things have continued. No. And, um. So you don't think that, you, you're not predicting that this generation of people who are younger people now are more censorious, more, you know, adamant about this. You think it will probably be around the same the same response. I think I think that those things have continued. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't I don't see I don't see a whole lot of uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of change. Mm -hmm. no. no. How did bookstores respond? Ah, that was interesting. There was a lot of nervousness. A lot of nervousness. Um, in fact, twenty years ago, when the um, I wrote a letter, I wrote a letter um, which book, a, a lot of bookstores would, would, would put the book up, <laughs> but right next to the book, they would have a letter that I wrote in which I explained what I was up to. <laughs> because a lot of bookstores were very nervous. There were some bookstores that um, I, I was afraid that bookstores wouldn't wouldn't display it, but actually the, the, a, lot, a lot of bookstores displayed it. Um, but th there was a considerable amount of uh, of of anxiety. I I, I do know that <laughs> there still is there still is much anxiety, um, but certain things have changed. Um, for instance, 20 years ago, um, it was okay to use the title of a book, nigger, 
in a publishing company, regardless of the anxiety or the nervousness it may have caused. Mm -hmm. Today, that's just simply not possible. We can use only the subtitle, the strange career of a troublesome word, or mm -hmm. nigger with ellipses. Mm -hmm. um, and that says something to me about how the culture has changed. Now, what do you mean when you say you can't yeah. use it in correspondence within the house? I mean, precisely. Correspondence within the house. Within the house. Mm -hmm. No nigger within the house. <laughs> That's so interesting, Carol. You, you may recall that when I sent you the manuscript, I just had the, the title, right. N I G G E R. Right. And I, I remember, and, and you said, A, we need a subtitle. Precisely. And I, and which, you know, you know, I scratched my head and, you know, you know mm -hmm. about a week, it took me about a week to come up with the subtitle. But I remember that. Uh, 20 years what ago. was the sub? What is the subtitle of? Um, the, the, did it come from the the strange career of Jim Crow? Yes, that was that, that was what I was. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that's exactly and the strange right. career of a troublesome word. Yeah, mm -hmm. Stra C. Van Woodward. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what no. I was playing off of. So, it, so is that. Now I, I'm still back on this publishing house thing. So when things right. are set around, it's just the the subtitle. And, it's a subtitle, if uh, only because. Was was there a was that a, a decision that was sort of sent around, or did people just sort of fall into doing that? No, uh, that was um, that was a conscious decision on the part of Penguin Random House mm -hmm. not to use um, mm -hmm. "nigger" the title of the book internally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas once upon a time, one could. And that to me bespeaks a difference in the culture um, regarding the word. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I mean, it's a difference in the culture regarding the word, but it's a difference in the culture period. There are a lot right. of things that you couldn't do or people could do 20 years ago, you can't do right. now. Exactly. Uh, because sensibilities have changed uh, right. during, that, during that time period. Well, is that, Okay, so is that a bad thing for the culture to change? I mean, for younger people to have different values than we have um, and to try to build a different world? Not necessarily, but I, I, I don't see that it's problematic to be able to state the title of a book. <laughs> <laughs> that does not strike me as a problematic issue, especially if you're the publisher. Mm -hmm. um, and have sold the book for 20 years. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is no knock on Penguin Random House because I, I assume any other publisher would have done the same. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I, you know, I, I was wondering, Errol, when I, you know, called you months ago, I was, I was wondering whether the publishing house was going to be willing to bring it out. I mean, that no, was, a, not that only was, was a, publishing, a question in my mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. not only was the publishing house willing to bring it out, the publishing house was willing to bring it out with alacrity, <laughs> okay. um, but had reservations about the title. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might notice that um, there is a difference in the two covers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, nigger was bold. <laughs> okay, white against black. Now it is black against black. Mm -hmm. um, almost as if the mm -hmm. word needs to be hidden mm -hmm. in order to sell the book. Mm -hmm. okay. Does it make it for a change in the kind of publishing campaign? Excuse I mean, me? Did, did it make for a change of, for the, the kind of publishing campaign? No, not at all. Not at all. You know. And I noticed that it's not, you know, the, the word itself um, is being played with outside of Penguin Random House. There are certain um, venues that will not say nigger, will be 
and symbol, 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 R. Um, so, you know, as long as people pick up the book and read it, you know, we're satisfied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what did you hope when you wrote it the first time? What, did, what result did you want, Randy? What, what would be? Um, well, you know, I, the idea really did grab me. I'll, I'll never forget. I mean, I was in, in the office on a Saturday thinking about things to do, you know, lectures to write, you know, you, you get invitations to give lectures. And so what, you know, what, what might an interesting lecture be? And I thought of this word and I thought, well, gosh, where did it come from? And I remember running up to the library, going to the um, reference, reference librarians, you know, quarters, you know, getting the Oxford English Dictionary, taking a look. And then just one thing led to another look, you know, what has happened in the law with this word? Mm -hmm. And I came up with, there were thousands, not, I mean, tens of thousands of cases. And I just started reading and reading and it just sort of took over. It just was such an interesting thing. And I, I mentioned it, I mentioned it to, um, I mentioned it to my older brother as the subject of a lecture and he thought, oh gosh, this will be a short lecture. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just took off within me. And it has led to a very interesting set of developments. I mean, I've been an expert witness in murder trials. I've been an you know I've I've been an expert in arbitrations. It's taken me so many different places, and um, tort actions. Uh, you know, it's it, it has taken me many places. I've gotten lots of letters from all sorts of people, and so it's 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 really led to you know quite an adventure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you didn't expect that. No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't expect that. That I, level of thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, becoming a consultant on the word nigger. Absolutely. Like I said, I mean, you know, e expert witness. And uh, it's led like, I mean, I've the, the, the only time I've ever been physically threatened because of something I have written had to do with this, uh, you know, had to do with this. I remember, mm -hmm. I remember a guy, guy tried to, you know, grab me in a bookstore. And, you know, fortunately there was security and you know, the mm -hmm. security people grabbed him before he could grab me. Mm -hmm. But, you know- Maybe this, he just liked you, Randy. Oh, no, I don't, <laughs> no, no, I can tell you, no, he wasn't, he, it was, he was, he was aiming, he wasn't gonna hug me, believe me. <laughs> Um, do, you hear, do you hear from white people? Oh, yes. Yes. What do they say about it? I all mean, sorts they... of things. All sorts of things. I've, 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 heard, I've heard from many white people who have said that they disagree with me. They think it's an awful word. And they think that my line is giving energy to the word. Mm -hmm. And that I, you know, I have made a mistake. I've gotten many letters. Mm -hmm. from people, uh, white people, as, as well as all, you know, all sorts of people, but white people in particular. I've gotten many letters from, you know, white people who talked about their uh, encounters with the infamous N-word. I've got, you know, letters ap apologizing, you know, when I was, you know, a younger person, I called so-and-so this, and, you know, I'm really sorry about that. Um, I've always wanted to apologize for it, and in as much as you've written this book, uh, I'm, you know, you're going to be the person to whom I, sh you know, uh, give this apology. So I've had all sorts of people have have written me with all sorts of different perspectives uh, on the infamous N word. Mm -hmm. Did anybody ever send anything that you thought was 
not persuasive, not, not persuasive, but made you, you know, set you back on this? Made you yes. think twice about it? Yes. Very early on, very early on, I remember one of the first, one of the first bookstores I went to was a very nice bookstore in Philadelphia. And I was, you know, I gave, you know, I talked about the book and people asked me questions. And then at the very, near the end, a black gentleman, older gentleman held up his hand. And I called on him and he said, I've heard what you've had to say. I think much of what you've had to say is interesting. But then he said, but I'm going to tell you, when I hear the word nigger, what comes to my mind is being sent to the back of the bus and not being able to vote. And that will always be with me. And that's why, notwithstanding, you know, all of what you said, I would prefer never to hear that word again. And that was very powerful. And mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I remembered mm -hmm. that. I took that on board. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's time for us to go to questions now um, that have been put in the Q&A &A here. Um, the first question. Does the book address nigger versus nigger? Yes. Oh, yes. So How? There, I guess you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah. So um, there are various ways in which this term has been spelled. I mean, you know, N-I-G-G-E-R, uh, N-E-G-G-A-R, N-I-G-G-U-R, or N-I-G-G-A. So, you know, uh, Errol mentioned, you know, hip hop, you know, nigga, and some people make a big difference. Some people distinguish nigger from nigga. Nigger <laughs> is bad. That's, you know, that's the slur. That's terrible. I didn't say that. Some people say, no, I said nigga. And nigga was a whole other thing. And so, I talk about that and, you know, I talk about the importance that some people, um, you know, for some people, this is a very important distinction. For me, it's not. For me, these various formulations, uh, you know, they're, they're part of uh, the same phenomenon. But I do talk about these different spellings and the way in which, like I say, some people put a lot of store by the different spellings. Mm -hmm. Does the book contribute to desensitizing the incendiary nature of the word? Is that a desirable goal? Some people have definitely thought that it was a, that using the term over and over would have the consequence of, uh, of, of uh, undermining its power, undermining its uh, taboo potency. I, I tell the story of that there was a man in, um, in California who petitioned the court to change his name to Mr. Nigger. And the reason why, and, and, and he was asked, he was asked, and in fact, by the way, the court refused. And he litigated the issue. And he said, you know, one, one of the reasons why I want to be called Mr. Nigger is because I think if people just say nigger, 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 it will lose its power. So that was, that was, a, that was a theory of, 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 of his. And there are, there are others who have uh, advanced that, that idea as well. Mm -hmm. Here's another. What if the word is upsetting and hurtful to some people in a deeply profound way? Shouldn't we consider that and not use it going forward out of respect for them? I'm not suggesting we need to censor people, but can't we self-edit to avoid hurting others? Also, I wonder if there, if there have been studies or efforts made to understand whether different genders react mm -hmm. to it differently, just as it seems like a, generationally there's a difference. Good, good, good points. 
first on the gender issue, um, I think there, I think there's there's space for work to be done on this. My own impression is that you know, in my book, uh, the if, if one just you know takes a look at the examples, takes a uh, takes a look at the the cast of characters using the term, it's overwhelmingly male. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it'd be interesting to see whether, uh, you know, to, to, to what extent is there a gender difference? My sense is, I, it, I think of it as being male coded. But that's just a, that, that's an impression on the on the question of hurtfulness. Um, there are social psychological studies that have uh, shown the hurtfulness, and that you know does 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 the presence of this term in society have real consequence? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I don't, I, you know, I, d does it cause hurt? Sure, it causes hurt. Um, one issue is, of course, well, you know, what does one do with that? Um, hurt itself, it seems to me, is a complicated thing. Um, I don't think that hurts just come out of nowhere, and I don't think that they are um beyond change themselves so if somebody says for instance to me that um i've said something that hurts their feelings mm -hmm. that tells me something but i still have lots of questions so for instance should their feelings be hurt i mean just because somebody's feelings are hurt Okay, I you know you you've got hurt feelings. Should your feelings be hurt? I I, I think um, I I, I want to know the answer to that. Sometimes so that people... gets to the that gets to the matter of how the word is being used. Whether, for instance, it's being used as an insult, um, and therefore is hurtful, or whether it's simply being mentioned, for instance, in an academic setting. Yeah, but so. Yeah, but some people would view the mention as deeply hurtful. Again, when I talked about the, you know, uh, teachers being disciplined, in the past year there are a slew of teachers in high school and in higher education who have been disciplined. Why? Because a student said the mere mention of the word, the mere mention, just hearing the word was traumatizing for them. Now, you know, one question I have is, uh, let's assume that that's true. And by the way, when I say let's assume it, I say that advisedly because, you know, um, it doesn't have to be true. It could be a claim that is putting, being put to a strategic use, but let's assume that someone truly does feel traumatized. I still say, well, you know, have I done something wrong? Should you should you feel traumatized? Maybe you ought not. Maybe you ought to work on that. Well, okay. So context is really important. Mm -hmm. And I'm interjecting here. Uh, context is really important. Can we differentiate people who are don't want to hear the word or see the word in a book? versus having a professor or someone casually referring to a student as a nigger mm -hmm. or another person as a nigger and not in a hostile way, but just using it in those terms. So, I mean, in the first one, I, it seems to me that it's more problematic to give in to the notion that you're hurt by something that is in a word of something that's in a book when mm -hmm. the term was of general usage and that this is a part of the culture and we see that versus, you know, a colleague saying, 
how you doing, nigger? Mm -hmm. um, that would be a diff. It's a different context. It's a different situation. So, I mean, we can't. I, I'm just saying. I don't think we can use the most extreme thing as you know to cover the whole question because there are just going to be so many gradations yep. of usage and context. I agree with you. I mean, I totally agree with you. I mean, I have been, ha you know, I, I have been the subject of salutations <laughs> from people, co colleagues, you know, wh whom I, you know, deeply respect mm -hmm. and enjoy, who, you know, in a given situation, mm -hmm. you know, have used the infamous N word as a salutation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you know, given, you know, given our relationship, given their tone of voice, given all that was surrounding that, mm -hmm. I knew what they were up to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, would I have a very different response if it was, let's say, a stranger? Yeah, I would have a very different response. <laughs> so, yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's very mm -hmm. context specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm sorry I interrupt this here. Um, do you believe cancel culture is helping to bring attention to the violence behind the word? Well, I mean, cancel culture, that's a term that, you know, it, it, that, that, that can mean, uh, many things, um, some good, some bad. What I mean by that is, so... I don't mind. I think it's a good thing when people protest conduct and, you know, uh, speech is a type of conduct. When people protest conduct that they think that that conduct that is um, running people down and disparaging them. And if when you know if if somebody is acting as a bully and is disparaging people for unjust reasons, and people respond by to that by ostracizing them, sometimes that's called cancel culture. As far as I'm concerned, fine. Uh, shaming is a perfectly fine and civilizing thing to do. So there, you know, sometimes people ought to feel ashamed of what they've done or what they've said. And so, you know, I think we need to be really, again, you know, careful. On the other hand, cancel culture can mean and is often, you know, connotes uh, an excessively um, narrow, doctrinaire, formulaic, coercive uh, tendency to, you know, sort of hem people in uh, and, and, and prevent people from expressing themselves in ways that, you know, should be tolerated. Mm -hmm. if, if, you know, that kind of, quote, cancel culture, no, I'm against that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that these things, you know, sometimes are, are conflated. Mm -hmm. I think we have time for one more question. I have a book coming out this April, Making History, about 2,500 years of history writing that has two chapters that deal with Black history and historians. I was asked to change the word Negro and happily did so, except when it appeared in a quotation, mainly in Civil War days. I was also asked to write that anyone that anyone was right, not to write that anyone was a slave, but rather to say they were enslaved is a proper way to acknowledge their humanity. So the battle for appropriate language goes on, yes? Yes, it does. And I'll end with Negro because this too is a, a word I'm very interested in. And I use quite often, I use black, African-American, uh, Negro, uh, people of color, <laughs> colored, I call. and with Negro in particular, in fact, there was a student a number of years ago who really objected very strongly in one of my lectures, you know, why are you using the word Negro? 
And I said, you know, I can I can date the precise year when I started using Negro a lot in my writing. And I did so at the direction of my boss. It was 1983, 1984. My boss was Mr. Civil Rights, Thurgood Marshall. He directed me. I use the term Negro capital N. My view is if it was good enough for Thurgood Marshall, if it was good enough for Martin Luther King Jr., if it was good enough for W.E.B. Du Bois, Negro is good enough for me. <laughs> that's great. Well, that's a, I think that's probably a good way to end this uh, from nigger to Negro, uh, the more fashionable term <laughs> for that. Um, this was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Randy. Have a good evening. Uh -huh. Thank you, all three of you. And uh, don't forget to use the link in the chat to buy your copy so that you can continue investigating this uh, on your own. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Goodbye. been an honor to hear you Goodbye. all. Thank you. Goodbye, all. Goodbye.